Hi everybody, I'm Gerdy Verboert, Their Greatly Coach. I work with highly high performing women who are struggling with inner conflict, who are facing their own mountains, their personal mountains, and who are entangled in other people's expectations. In eight weeks or less, I help them reset their minds, design their own life map, and learn how to use tools and skills to blaze their own trail in life. And today I want to talk to you about how you can dis uh, how you can recognize signs that you're unhappy in your successful in in an otherwise successful career and that is something that lots of people have talked to me about and something that I have a lot of personal experience with as well so but before I um, I co continue I would really like to welcome welcome you to this uh, Facebook live and if you're here and listening and watching just type in trailblazer in the comment section below so that I know that I'm not just talking to myself. As I said, signs that you are unhappy in an otherwise successful career, what can they be? And usually those signs are, are signs of inner conflict, a conflict that you're faced with because on the one hand you are successful and for all intents and purposes doing great at whatever the work it is that you're doing it and at the same time you're unhappy it was something I talked about in my last vi last video how you can be unhappy and how that is something that we don't really talk about when we're unhappy in a career that we're successful at in work that we're good at it's not supposed to be the case usually people assume that when you're working in a career that when you're good at what you do that you also like and perhaps even love what it is that you do and that makes it hard for us to talk about those things. But when you're unhappy, even when you manage to, um, to push those thoughts to the way to the back of your mind and sometimes don't experience those feelings deeply for weeks on end or perhaps even longer, still your body, your mind might be telling you, you are not on the right track. Now, if I look back at my own career, where I ended up being a, a, eventually a project manager and a consultant and pretty successful, there were times, months on end, where I didn't really pay attention to that lingering feeling of unhappiness. I know friends of mine that have had that. I've had clients who have experienced that feeling. And almost all of us, almost all my clients, and even myself as well, we um, worked really hard. We worked really hard to cover up those feelings. We worked really hard to make sure that what we did at work was good, that we delivered good results, that our clients, our colleagues were satisfied with the products that we were delivering, with the work that we were doing. Because Talking about being unhappy in, in your work, for me at least, felt almost unsafe to be doing that. Now, how did that manifest itself? How does it manifest itself perhaps with you? And that is something that I want to dive into a little bit deeper. But before you go, if you've just joined me, let me repeat. My name is Gerdy Verwoerd, they are greatly coach, and I work with uh, high performing women just like you who are facing their personal mountains, who are struggling with inner conflict and who are tangled up in other people's expectations. And if you, hi Trish, welcome. And if you're just joining, um, just let me know that you're watching. Just type in Trailblazer in the comment section below. And if you are watching this in the replay, welcome as well. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. So how does being unhappy in a professional career or perhaps even in something else that you're really good at but with, that you don't like doing how can that manifest itself there's different ways if i um, look at signs that hi trish thank you so if i look at the signs that clients have told me about um, it it can start you know just really with a sort of vague sense of uneasiness or a vague sense of not wanting to get into work when it's Monday, you know, or when it's Sunday night, not looking forward to the fact that you have to go into work tomorrow or that you have to go to do a certain activity. If um, 
Maybe you find yourself starting the week and already looking forward to the Friday afternoon when the weekend is starting. Uh, I, when I look at myself, I, I, it got, I got to a point where um, I used to try and get as much sleep as I could. And I function best at six or seven, but preferably eight hours of sleep, of sleep a night. And I would get those in, but I would still be really tired when I got up. So maybe you recognize some of these signals. And if you are experiencing things like that, which may not immediately affect your health, but health, but eventually will, it is time to start looking at the life you're living, at what you're doing. And especially if you're not looking forward to going to work on Mondays or you wake up every day and you, you have to, first of all, you wake up because the alarm goes off, not because your body tells you it is time to wake up. And then when the alarm goes off, the f almost the first thing you think, oh my God, oh my, I have to get into work and I'm not looking forward to it. And you turn, you know, you turn over and sleep, try to, to stay in bed for as long as possible. And if you're anything like me, I missed a couple of um, those, what do you call them? Those, those snooze button, button um, settings, which caused me to sleep, well, to sleep in really, to, to oversleep and get back to, to get to work late, which is not really conducive to having a good career. Because at some point, all those physical, uh, all those things will start affecting your performance. Now, what other signs could there be? Um, some people, because they're so busy, because they're working so hard and because they're trying to, um, how do you say this, to, to present this image of a really good employee, of a really successful person who is happy at what they're doing, they might start to suffer um, from high blood pressure. The stress might be getting to them and they start stress eating, which is something I did. I, ev I eventually ended up being 25 kilos overweight which is, um, I think that's about 50, 55 pounds. I'm not quite sure. So that has started affecting my health. I, you know, I, I got less time. I thought I had less time. I didn't make any more time to work on my fitness, to stay fit and to uh, eat healthy. And that's not something that just happens to me, that not just happened to me. That is something that happens to my clients as well, that happens to... Uh, to people that I'm working with or that I've worked with in the past. You know, eating unhealthy, not sleeping enough, being too tired, still really tired when you get up, high blood pressure, palpitations, heart palpitations. And if you're not careful, you know, that might all end up have you um, being or ending up at the doctors. So what do you do when you look at your life and when you look at yourself and the way you're living your life, what do you do when you find yourself having these experiences? Now, the first thing that you re really need to do is um, take stock of what it is you're doing and why you are doing it. And I want to remind you, this is not, I'm not a medical person. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist or anything. So if you're having serious health problems, if you're really having trouble with your blood pressure, for, for example, or you're seriously overweight, please consult your general, your general practitioner, your GP or any other doctor and, uh, you know, have a good medical exam and make sure that um, whatever it is that you're experiencing is not caused by anything physical that's really wrong with you. If I go back to my own symptoms, for example, um, I had serious stomach problems and I had serious stomach problems for a long, long time. And I always blamed them on the fact that, first of all, I was really busy. I worked 60 to 80 hours and sometimes even more hours a week. I didn't eat healthy. I knew every McDonald's along the highways in the Netherlands, everyone, I'm not kidding. Um, and I knew it inside out. I knew exactly how far I had to drive before I got to another one. And I was a, uh, I was not so much a fan, but it was convenient. Um, 
So I ate unhealthy. When I got home, I usually was too tired to cook. So a bag of chips and a Coke would, you know, sometimes would oftentimes be my dinner more times than I care to remember. So I would always think, well, you know, if my, my stomach was troubling me, there's, that's obvious, you know, I didn't eat healthy. I didn't sleep enough. I was tired. I ate too fat or I didn't eat fat enough. I ate too sweet. I had, I ate a pint of ice cream and a bag of chips a night. It can't be good for you, right? So, oh, and guys, if you're just joining me, please type in trailblazer so that I know that I'm not just talking to myself. That's uh, would be great. Thanks. So what happened when I finally started paying attention to all those physical symptoms? Because I went to the doctors and I've had clients who went to the doctors and had themselves be examined. And in my case, my GP couldn't find anything wrong with me. And I'm a bit peculiar in that way. I thought, well, if there's nothing physically wrong with me, there must be something mentally wrong with me. So eventually I decided to really cut back on the stre on um, all the work that was causing me that stress. And lo and behold, a week later, and I'm not kidding, a week later, my stomach problems were gone. It was amazing. It was, for me, it was clear. It was clearly linked to all the stress that I caused myself by being in a career that I was unhappy in and my inner conflict was I'm in this career people expect me to be happy people that I care about want me to be successful and I'm being successful so why is it that I'm unhappy and this was this inner conversation that was going on all the time and that's a, an inner conversation that clients of mine have had all the time and it's you know, on the one hand, it looks good, it feels good, you think you should be happy, so why aren't you? And on the other hand, you keep telling yourself, I wish I knew what it was that I wanted to do. I wish I could get out of this situation, but how do I change it? So when you have, when you're experiencing physical symptoms, like the ones that we've been, that we've been discussing, like... Um, high blood pressure, sleeping really, sleeping really badly or uh, sleeping but not waking up, um, uh, how do you say, rested. When you're um, overweight, when you're, you know, you have rashes all the time, your skin is really bad, you, you, you feel tired all the time, you have, um, your fitness is, ha has gone down the drain, you don't have time or you, you think you don't have time to um, to, to, to play sports, to, to make sure that you relax, to read a book, you come home and you sit in front of the television and before you know it, you know, you, you turn it on, on at seven and before you know it, it's 11 and you've got no idea what you've been watching. You know, those are all signs that something is not quite right. And especially if you're, you know, starting the week, looking forward to the weekend and if you're ending the weekend dreading the work week that lies ahead of you. Don't go on like that. Start examining where are these feelings coming? Where are these feelings coming? Feelings coming from? How can I? How can you make changes that make room for yourself? How can you start eating healthier? How can you start, um, you know, creating quiet time? making time for yourself so that you can read that book instead of mindlessly watching television and not knowing what you've been watching at the end of the night. Or just maybe go take a walk with the dog, you know. Try and figure out where these feelings are coming from and try and figure out what is it that is causing you to think that you have to live up to those expectations that in part you've been putting on yourself because it's you that is saying you should be happy and if you're my, in my experience when you say I should be liking this it's always a good question to ask yourself who is telling me this who is the person that is telling me that I should be liking this so um, what else what is there if you've got any questions guys please let me know 
it is important for you to take care of yourself. Let me remind you, I'm not a medical person. So if you're experiencing any of these si signals, if you've got um, serious problems, please go and um, check with your GP. Have, a, have him or her check you out and make sure there's not a serious medical problem underlying all these things. If there's not, it is a sign. It's a sign that your unconscious is telling you there's something wrong with the way you're living your life. So let me tell you briefly a story and experience that I had in my life. At some point, I, I used to have a job where I had to travel quite a bit and the, the Netherlands is small. Trish, you know this, you live in the Netherlands. It's a really small place, two hours from east to west and maybe if you stretch it, three hours from north to south, that's it. But if you have to travel from meeting to meeting across country, it's still quite a bit of time in the car. And as when I was as stressed as I was back then, at some point, when I was driving, my mind would just shut my body down, which was not a good thing because shutting my body down literally and uh, used to cause me to fall asleep behind the wheel. Uh, or what it also could do was just have me literally mindlessly drive from A to B. So I was driving at some point on the um, highways around Amsterdam and I had to take a right turn somewhere to drive to the eastern part of the country and all of a sudden I found myself way too far north going through a tunnel and I was like this is weird I shouldn't be going through a tunnel and I figured out that I had been driving for at least 20 minutes without consciously noticing anything about the traffic around me. So I turned around, I, I took the next exit, get, drove back to the exit that I should have been taken, took the exit and couldn't drive any further than the next rest, rest stop that, um, that was along the highway. So I got back to my GP, told him what had happened and he had me examined from top to bottom and inside out and they thought I had apnea, I didn't. But I ended up having a driver for more, for I think something like four or five months. Which is weird, you know, I didn't have a position that comes with a driver. My own boss, my, the director of the company I was working for, didn't even have a driver. So I had a driver, I had a student drive me around the countryside to get from meeting A to meeting B. Instead of doing the sensible thing, by the way, or, and, and that would have been take time off, make, room, make time for myself, make time to figure out why it was that I was falling asleep behind the wheel in the first place. And I later figure out, figured out that that, was, that is one of the alarm signals that I now know I have. When I start falling asleep, when I'm driving the car, first of all, I get off the, way, off the highway immediately, or I get off the road immediately, find a spot where I can park and sleep for 20 minutes. But other than that, I know that I'm doing something in my life that is not what I'm supposed to be doing. That is not in line with my own values, with my own um, set of principles. So that's another thing. If you know what signals your body or your mind is sending you, whether it is sleeping six, seven, eight hours a night and still waking up really, really tired, or whether it is stomach problems or heart palpitations or all of a sudden you find yourself going to, the, to, going to the fridge every single free moment and see whether there's something to snack in there or you go to the pantry and find out if there's chocolate in there that you can binge on. These can all be signals that are telling you that you have to look at what it is you're doing in your life, what it is you're doing in your career, what it is that you need to change to start blazing your own trail. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to post them in the comment section. If you're watching this after uh, in the replay, after this is finished, don't, you know, also let me know, just post um, comment trailblazer in the comment section so I'll know that you have been watching. I would really appreciate it. Share this video with, uh, with your friends, with, your, with whomever you think it might be really useful for. I would really appreciate that as well. And if you, you know, if you want to find out more, click on the link that's in the uh, in the post here, and uh, we'll be talking again. 
soon. Thanks for watching and uh, have a great day, night, depending on when it is you're watching this and where you are in the world. As always, go there greatly and have a good one, guys. Bye bye.